I am so excited you decided to click on this video because I have put together 12 of my top most favorite Dollar Tree Christmas DIYs that I know you're gonna love. So if that's something you're interested in, just keep watching. Please keep in mind that I have put these together from several different years. So the background might look a little bit different. I might sound a little bit different. I recently lost a bunch of weight and it really helped my confidence. So I definitely sound a little bit different than some of these videos. So just keep that in mind. I'm a busy mama. I just had a baby two months ago. So I did not have a chance to voice over the entire thing over. So I hope you guys enjoy it. Let me know which project is your favorite. And with that being said, let's jump into today's video. And thank you so much for being here. Let's start off with three of these Dollar Tree signs. I start off by taking off the hangers with my staple pull, and then because the front of these signs were just kind of peeling off, I did just go ahead and peel it off the rest of the way. I then flipped them over and sanded down the spots where the staples were connected to the back, and then I fill in those holes with some lightweight spackling from Dollar Tree. To speed up the drying process, I just took my blow dryer on high heat and I just blow dried them for a couple minutes and then I went in with my zip sander and sanded those down smooth. I then just vacuumed up the mess because the, that kind of dust like drives me nuts while I'm trying to work. And then for the top of this sign, all I did was just take my roller and I marked the middle. I then took my roller kind of down on an angle on each side and drew lines. Um, I did the first line and then I connected it at the bottom. That way the second line I could make sure was going to look uniform on both sides. And then to cut this down, all I did was take my straight edge and my utility knife and I just put my straight edge on that line and then scored it a couple times with my utility knife. And then I was able to just bend it and then cut it from the back and then clean up the edges. For the side pieces of this, I just laid it on this side of it. I marked where I wanted it and then I repeated this step with my utility knife. To smooth things out a little bit. Also take note that sometimes when you score it and then bend it backwards and cut it from the back, it cuts uneven so you do just have to cut the edge off. Sometimes I use my scissors, sometimes I cut it down with my knife, it just depends. But after that I go in with my white Waverly chalk paint and I give all three pieces a good couple coats to cover all of that brown. A while back I had grabbed this artist palette from Dollar Tree and showed it in a haul and I haven't used it yet until this video and I have to say you guys I love this thing it is so convenient to have so I pulled it out and I put some Nimbus and some mineral Waverly chalk paint on the artist palette. I then go in with my bigger chip brush that I get from Home Depot. I believe they're about 97 cents a piece. And I just randomly dab in either color and dry brush all the way down the middle of our sign. Now I get a lot of questions on my dry brush technique a lot. So I am just going to let this clip play here for just a second so you guys can see kind of the way that I do it. Next, I go in with the mineral 
as well as the Nimbus kind of going back and forth and just taking the edge of my chip brush and going in a circular motion to give the effect of kind of like a knot in the wood. I then go in with some of my ink Waverly chalk paint and just dry brush around the edges as well as the knots just to make all of those details stand out. Next, I take the two side pieces and I lay them side by side and then I cut a piece of contact paper to fit both. Now, Dollar Tree sells a ton of contact paper. I just have a huge roll of this, so I'm going to use what I have on hand. Don't come for me in the comments saying, oh, this isn't a Dollar Tree project, blah, blah, blah. I don't want to hear it. I use what I have on hand. It is what it is. So um, I just cover my two pieces and I do this side by side that way I know that both sides are going to look perfectly even so I just lay out my my contact paper and I start by pulling the backer sheet away from the contact paper if you try to pull the contact paper from the backing sheet a lot of times it will rip um, so I have found that that was really helpful when using co contact paper and then once I had it covered, then I go in with my utility knife and I just separated both the pieces and then I folded the pieces around the edges. Next, I go in with my white Waverly chalk paint and I just kind of dry brush some white streaks on either side of the middle sign. Next, to attach this, I flip it over and I use some hot glue and large popsicle sticks down the seams holding it together while the glue dries to make sure that it stays together nicely. Next, I use those same large popsicle sticks to cut down pieces for the roof on the top peak as well as the side peaks. For stain, I used my Antique Wax by Waverly and I just used a regular paintbrush to give those, again, that stained look. Once I cut the edges of the top house peak, then I go in with my hot glue and I glue those pieces down. I also glued the side pieces down as well. I then took one of these little buckets from Dollar Tree that you can get in like the party section or the wedding section and I just cut that in half with my tin snips after I pulled off the little handle. I was actually pretty shocked at how well this cut. So the easiest way I found to cut this with my tin snips was to cut down one side and then cut down the other side and then kind of bend it and then cut the bottom from there. Once I had both of those cut as well as the little edges cut off where the piece was holding the um, handle, then I lay my pieces down on a piece of foam board and I cut out or I trace the back and then cut a piece of foam board out that way we can cover the back. I then was just very very generous with my hot glue and I attached those pieces to the back of our half buckets. I then gave them both three good coats of my mineral Waverly chalk paint, allowing each coat to dry in between coats. Don't forget the inside and the outside edges as well. And then I go in with that same chip brush that we used earlier and my antique wax, and I generously dry brush that antique wax on both of our half buckets. 
And I am just so sorry, not sorry to the ones who don't like dry brushing, but I love the way that those little half buckets look with that dry brushing. It looks so rustic. It really just looks like a piece of wood. I don't know. Let me know in the comments down below what you guys think. But I took some greenery that I got from a little antique shop and I just kind of pulled it apart. And then I glued two of the pieces of greenery together to make it look like a little Christmas tree. I then hot glued those inside of the buckets and then to cover the inside of the bucket that way you couldn't see it I just took a little bit of reindeer moss and kind of just shoved that in to make sure that you could not see that white like I said Next, I took a piece of this wood from Dollar Tree. Dollar Tree has all kinds of different wood shapes nowadays so you can definitely find them in the crafter square section even the crappy dollar trees have the crafter square section i know that a lot of it, a lot of them stink i have to travel to several so trust me i understand your your pain but anyway for these steps i took a small popsicle stick from dollar tree or i guess this is considered like a medium size and then i took a large popsicle stick from walmart and i just cut a um, bigger step at the bottom and then a smaller step at the top and then for the windows i kind of played around with different sizes Ultimately, in the end, I used all of my skinny sticks or coffee stirs, whatever you want to call them, and I just laid out my pieces, marked them as I go for windows. And I stained those as well with the antique wax. Now to assemble the windows, I started off using my hot glue on the edges of these skinny sticks and that does work. And the way that I got that to work was I used the top piece and glued on each side. I laid it down and then took the side pieces and kind of just pushed it up into the hot glue. And then once that dried, then I moved on to the next bottom piece. I quickly realized that if I just flipped this over, I could lay my pieces down and then just hot glue the cross beams, if that makes sense. Now I wanted to put like window boxes at the top or I don't even really know what these are called but I kind of wanted to put a decoration on the top of the windows so I took a large popsicle stick and just kind of laid it on the top of my window to see how long I wanted the edges and then marked it. I then just took my roller and made lines on kind of like a V. Now to cut this out, I found that the easiest way that this does not split is you have to basically chop it really small cuts like chop, 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 if that makes sense. I made two of those and then I painted both of those with my chalkboard paint from Dollar Tree. So for the windows, I took a piece of scrapbook paper and I just kind of measured the back and then cut those out. But please don't make the same mistake that I did. I wanted the back of these to look like the window pieces were kind of cut out. So I wanted the windows to be white. Well, I ended up putting the pattern side towards the front. <laughs> so don't make the same mistake I did. Here it goes. And then I'm like, shoot. So I just pulled it off, no big deal. And I cut another piece and then glued that down on the right side this time for both windows.
I wanted to show you guys for the door. You can do like a cool accent door. I ended up not using that scrapbook paper, but I did think that it would look pretty cool. So if you are living on the edge and you want your church door to look marbled, then get yourself some scrapbook paper and I think that it would look really awesome. But for my door, what I did was made a mark in the middle and then I drew three boxes on either door. So um, two at the top, two rectangles in the middle, and then two at the bottom. I then go over my lines with my Sharpie paint pen in black. I hated the door handles that I drew on there, so I sanded those off and just put dots for door handles. And now comes the fun part, assembling everything. So for the steps, I didn't want them to be flat. I wanted them to look cohesive and 3D with the rest of the items. So I just attached two skinny sticks to the back of each, and then I glued all the pieces down with some hot glue. Now, I, this was missing a little something at the top, so originally I was going to use my Believe transfer, but it was a little bit too big, so I came across this All is Calm, All is Bright, and I loved the wording, so I did just transfer that wording on with my black chalk paste, and this transfer is on sale right now, so you can probably get the paste and the transfer for just a couple bucks, and I'll leave the link in my link tree in the description box. Just look for the wording that says all of the links are now in one place. So once I had that transferred on, then I take two jumbo popsicle sticks from Walmart. I cut those down and I attach those in the shape of a cross. And then once again, I stain it with my antique wax. To make this cross stand out and give it a little bit of dimension, I just took a little bit of my Ink Waverly chalk paint on, an end, on the end of the brush that I just used and I just dry brushed some of that paint all over the cross. Again, no rhyme or reason and dry brushing is a personal preference so if you don't like that then you can skip that step and then I attach the cross to the top with some hot glue in the back. I then took a small wreath that I got from Hobby Lobby, and this is a grapevine wreath. I attached some of that same greenery that we used for the trees onto the mini wreaths with onto the mini wreath with some hot glue, and then I attached it to the sign with some hot glue as well, and attached a little bow from Dollar Tree to the top of my wreath, just a simple neutral colored bow, and I just absolutely love the way that this 3D sign turned out. I love that it's neutral and there's not really bold pops of color. Sometimes I love the neutral for Christmas, sometimes I love the bold pops of color. I feel like for this year I'm going a little bit more neutral, so this sign is a little bit more my speed for this year, but let me know in the comments down below what you guys think. So I am playing around here with a few different camera angles. So you guys are going to see throughout this video, it's a little bit different because I'm trying something new, you know, um, 
I'm always looking of ways to improve my content for you guys, so just keep that in mind. I did just wanna mention that. So I start off with 10 of these Dollar Tree crates, the same exact crates that I used in my original crate DIY that sparked this whole trend, interest, whatever you wanna call it. So anyway, I start with the boxes by taking the stickers off of the back, and then with my wood glue, I glue one row of four, one row of three, one row of two, and then obviously there's one at the top. Once those rows were dry, then I go in with my wood glue once again, and I glue all of the layers together, having my measuring tape handy so that way I can make sure that these are nice and center. Um, on certain things, I'm really OCD, and if I glued this together and it was not even, I probably would have made another one or ripped it apart or something. So to avoid all that, I just measure twice and then glue once. So to achieve this stained look, I used my Moss Waverly chalk paint and a little bit of water with my Badger little paint mixer in a little Dixie cup. And then I take my bigger brush that I get on Amazon. My Amazon link is in the description box in my link tree, as well as all of my links. Um, but I just take my bigger brush and I stain the entire thing front and back. Now on TikTok, I had a question of why I um, didn't stain the boxes before I put them together. And that's because that's a lot more work. You have to stain a lot more sides or paint whatever than you would when it's all put together. Um, I also just recently got this turn tape this turntable that you guys, I love it so much. It made this painting process so easy because I would just turn the table. I just love it. If if you guys want me to show you how to make a turntable with a fidget spinner, let me know in the comments down below. To speed the drying process, I use my old blow dryer that I have out in my craft room to dry this up. That way we can move on to the next step. Now to close up like the holes in the tops and the bottom of these crates, you can use popsicle sticks, stir sticks, uh, really whatever you like, but I literally found the easiest thing to do because you're not going to really put anything really that heavy in these so to use something like I'm about to show you is perfect for this so I take these wallpapers from Dollar Tree I found them in the automotive section actually my best friend Heather found them for me thanks Heather um and I just wanted to show you guys that there's different patterns, so you can use whatever you like and what you prefer. But I felt that with the Christmas decor and with the color that the, um, pa the wallpaper that I chose went best with my color palette. So I just measured the inside bottom and top of these little crates and then I measured them out and cut them down with my Cricut paper cutter and then for the sides I also individually measure those out cut those down and then these are so super easy just to peel the backing off and stick down that's what I love about this there's no like saws involved or you know sis you know heavy scissors trying to cut a zillion popsicle sticks and so again you can do whatever you like but for me personally this is what I chose and I absolutely love the way that it looks and the way that it turned out so I'm definitely glad that I went with this option and to just even these up because when you cut these down you're not going to get them perfectly even as you guys know the Dollar Tree crates are not all treated equally so there are different shapes and sizes it's weird, but I did just go in with my zip sander and just sand down all those edges smooth so that all of my edges look the same. For the front of this, I take all of my scraps, and this is why I tell you guys never throw away your scraps because I use my scraps all the time. So for the fronts of these, I take my scraps of my stir sticks and I just measure those out and then cut those down with my seven and a quarter inch miter saw. I do get questions about that, but um, my camera is like on a tripod and 
I always forget to like bring the camera over where my saw is. So um, I do use a miter saw, but you can use a hand miter saw for these. They cut very easily. I'm just lazy and I like the easiest way possible. So once I had those all cut down, then I go in with my antique wax and I stain those front pieces. And here is my little baby. Look how cute she is, you guys. She loves like playing with my brushes and stuff and it was time to take her in for a bit. So it was time to clean up and I thought that I would share that cute little clip with you guys. But to attach these to the front of our little faux tree, I just used some woodworking hot glue to attach those. And I did just wanna show you guys these cool angles. Um, the left angle is for TikTok, the right angle is for YouTube, but so if you're wondering, that's why. But anyway, once I had those front pieces glued down, then I go in with my label holders that I get in a big pack from Amazon. You guys are super cheap. I'll leave the link in my link tree in the description box. Um, and then once I had all of those screwed down to the center of each box, then that was it for this uh, part, you guys. We are going to be doing all of the little decor inside of this piece that we made last week. Now, I was hoping to have this edited and up last week, um, but that didn't work out. So let's just jump right in today. So I start off with this piece from Dollar Tree. You can find it in the crafter square section. And originally I had cut the tag off of it, painted it with my cashew Waverly chalk paint and then distressed it with my antique wax and transferred on December 25th with some holly leaves. And they were different colors. I did not like the colors. And it's crazy how when, you, when I set it inside of the piece, just by having different colors, the whole aesthetic was different. So I did just wanna change those colors. So I went with my white Waverly chalk paint, my black chalk paste, and my candy apple, and I just transferred on that wording. And then I used my shimmer spruce for the holly leaves and the crimson for the berries. And I used a like the end of my silicone tool just to create berries, but um, this did come with with berries they were just a little bit too big for where I needed them to be so that's why I just created my own you're also going to see throughout this video that I have different angles for you guys because I just think that sometimes it's nice to see the project done from different angles so it's a little bit more work but that's okay because I think the experience is going to be much different um, but anyway once I was done with the berries then I just glued on some of my red and white buffalo check ribbon around the edging just to give it some dimension moving on to the next project I just take two of these blocks from Dollar Tree I take the tag off and then use my antique wax by Waverly to stain them and wipe off the excess with a paper towel I then go in with my cashew Waverly chalk paint and distress all the way around the blocks Next, I go in with my Chalk Couture Christmas Minis. I cut off the ones that I liked. And because I knew that you were only going to be able to see three sides of these blocks, I only transferred on a design to three. But if you would like to switch them around, change them out, you can certainly um, transfer on something to all of the sides or print something out, transfer it on with graphite paper. There's so many different options. You can cut up the calendar from Dollar Tree so definitely um, the possibilities are endless and then I just transferred on what I liked like I said drying in between coats and don't forget that all of the chalk couture products I use in this video will be linked in my link tree in the description box I just love them so much you guys because it's so easy literally a five-year-old can do it there's no computer involved weeding no crazy tools it literally takes seconds so anyway that was it so quick and easy and I just love the way that these blocks turned out so let me know in the comments what you think 
Moving on to the next project, you guys, this is so simple, it's not even funny. So, a while back, I bought a huge pack of fairy lights from Amazon. I believe there was like 24 in the pack, and it was like 20 bucks or something crazy cheap. Um, but the battery pack is really, really small. So, I took one of these light-up trees from Dollar Tree, and I knew that the top was a little bit too tall. So, I just took my tin snips and snipped the top off, and then I take my fairy lights from Amazon and I just wrap them around until there is no more. Once I have wrapped them all around then I just glue my battery pack to the bottom and last but not least I just glue or actually matter of fact there's two more steps. I painted the bottom with my truffle Waverly chalk paint just to cover up that bottom piece and then I made a simple shoestring bow to glue to the top in just some red I don't even know red jute is that what it's called yeah red jute at the top and I glued that down simple easy peasy and I stuck that in my decor piece and it literally lo literally looks so cute I would pick this up from any high-end store what about you Moving on to the next simple project. Now, this is not necessarily a Dollar Tree project. It definitely could be, and I did have a bunch of Dollar Tree greenery, but nothing that really caught my eye that I personally liked for mistletoe, but that's just me, you guys. I have been eyeing this greenery up that I have had for a while as mistletoe, so it probably was one of those things where like, I already had this particular greenery in my head so like nothing else was going to satisfy that thought if that makes sense but anyway I start off by just cutting off some of this greenery from a pick that I got from the Christmas tree shops I then just glue some of the pieces in place so that it looked more full and then I take red berries from a different pick I take it off of the pick and then hot glue it randomly to the one that we just glued together Last but not least, to finish this off, I created a bow with my red and white buffalo check ribbon. I glued that to the top. And then to attach this to my little box, if you guys remember, I put wallpaper from Dollar Tree in the top and the bottom of these boxes. So all I did was write in the handle of the box um, above that paper. I just kind of stuck it in and it literally stuck so easily and I just love the way that this turned out. So you guys let me know in the comments down below what you think. Okay, you guys, my husband just bought this for me. I love it so much, and I had to show you a few different angles. I had to show you it in reverse and then in forward again because I just can't get over how much this thing has come in handy and how easy it is to use. So I take one of these planks from Dollar Tree, I cut it down to size to fit inside of our little boxes, and then I paint it with my white Waverly chalk paint, giving a giving it a distress coat. Next, I go in with my mistletoe transfer and all of the Chalk Couture products that I use in this video will be linked in my link tree in the description box. There's a huge sale going on, so definitely don't um, miss out on that. But I had to kind of fit the free on there and unfortunately, I didn't I didn't get it even and I didn't have enough time to change it. Um, and it's really annoying me, but I just had to, you know, let it go for now. So anyway, I created a simple bow with my greenery from Hobby Lobby. I believe it's the Canadian Canadian stems. I don't know exactly, but I got them from Hobby Lobby and they come in a bunch of, in a pack of stems. And then I take my red berry garland from Dollar Tree, wrap that around the little mini wreath, and then I just secure that down with some hot glue. Once my wreath was secured down then last but not least I go in with my antique wax and I give it um, some distressing with my wax and I just love distressing you guys and that was it I love the way that this one turned out I think that the chalk couture just gives it such amazing detail that I would not be able to achieve on my own Next, once again, this is not necessarily a Dollar Tree project, but it can be. I never found, actually I should reword that. 
I found those cute little jars from Dollar Tree with the buffalo check lids on them, but I could not for the life of me find where I put it. So I just went in my stash. I found these that I also got from the Christmas tree shops, which they were 99 cents. So basically same thing. Um, but I just start by taking the lid and giving a good coat of my crimson Waverly chalk paint. And I give the jar a coat of my steel Waverly chalk paint. Once my paint once my paint was completely dry, then I go in with my mini zip sander and I just sand random edges. I just wanted this to look old and weathered. And then I went in with my mini chip brush and my white Waverly chalk paint to further make it look old and weathered. And I dry brush that white all the way around the jar as well as the lid. Next, I go in with my mini buffalo check white and red ribbon and I just tie that around the neck of the bottle and then tie a bow and to finish this off I cut some greenery off of the same picks that I have been using and I just attach that on either side of the bow just to give it a little bit of color and tie all of those colors together. I think that all of these colors together just look absolutely gorgeous and it just gives those Christmassy vibes and looks amazing in this piece. So you can let me know in the comments down below if you think that this piece fits in this tree or if you think I should have done something different there. Okay, friends, so I just want you to know that just by being here, clicking that thumbs up, hitting subscribe, sharing, all of those things really help my channel to grow and really help YouTube to notice me just a bit more. But if you would like to further support the channel, you can go to buymeacoffee.com at all things crafty if you enjoy my work and would just like to support what I do. But anyway, I didn't want to spend too much time on that. Moving on to the next project, I take this foam piece from Dollar Tree that is in the shape of a tree tree and I just start by measuring it and then cutting it down to size so that it will fit in our box. Now so that this will sit flat on you know in the box or even if you just wanted it on a shelf or whatever I wanted to make sure that it would sit flat so I just took some large popsicle sticks I measured out the bottom I cut those down and then glued it down and then I gave this a really good coat of my truffle Waverly chalk paint. Next, I take the same greenery that I've been using. I just love it for some reason. It it just looks so high-end to me and so realistic that I'm, I just keep grabbing for it every time. But all I do is just take the picks and I start by gluing them down side by side. The next layer, I go in between those pieces. And then the last layer, I take pieces from one side to the next further up at the top pinching in the middle, putting a little bit of hot glue, making sure that it dries a little bit so you don't burn yourself or use a silicone, um, you know, finger saver, whatever they're called. Um, just make sure you don't burn yourself, but pinch it up at the top so that it gives the illusion of like the top of a tree. And I did that three times. So I did it on one side. I moved over a little bit. I did it on that side and then I finished it off um, for the last time. And I hope that makes sense. If it doesn't, um, you can go back and look and slow the clip down with the three, with the three dots in the right hand corner, um, a menu will appear and you can slow the clips down. Last but not least, I dry brush some white to give the illusion of snow, and I just love the way that this tree turned out. So moving on to one of my favorites in this whole piece, I take this little tag ornament from Dollar Tree and I just pull it apart and then I um, cut it down to size so that again it would fit in these little boxes. I then just sand all of that glitter off and give one of the sides a, go a good two coats of my Crimson Waverly chalk paint and then once those coats were dry, I dry brushed it with my white Waverly chalk paint. For the back piece, I take this scrapbook paper that I got from Michaels or Hobby Lobby. Don't quote me, but I know it was one or the other. And I just cut that out and then attach it with some of my disappearing purple glue stick. Once that was attached, then I just kind of lay these together. I put them in the box before I glue it down. That way I know again that it will fit. And then once I know it'll fit, then I just use some hot glue to attach those together. 
Next, I go in with my mini Christmas minis chalk couture transfer and I chose the Noel. I thought that it looked gorgeous with this. So I transferred that on with my white Waverly chalk paint. Again, the Christmas minis will be in my link tree. And then to finish this off, I took a piece of greenery, glued that down to the top. I made a simple bow with this red and cream colored ribbon. I glued that down to the bottom of the greenery and that was it, you guys. I love this one so much. I don't know, this might be my favorite. Let me know in the comments down below which mini is your favorite. Moving on to another super simple project, I take this mini terracotta pot from Dollar Tree and usually I put rocks in the bottom of these but I didn't have any so I just used some pine cones um, just to give this tree some height and then I put a bunch of hot glue on top of the pine cones and then stuck my tree in there. Next, I dry brushed it with some white once again to give the illusion of snow. And to finish it off, I created a tiny little bow to glue to the top of our tree. And once again, that quick and easy. And I just love the way that this tree turned out. So for our last project, you guys, if you are here, you're absolutely amazing. Thank you so much for sticking around. Check me out on TikTok and all of, uh, all of my other social medias. I have been dropping these DIYs before this video. So if you wanna see content before I put it on YouTube, definitely go check me out. But all I did was just create stain with different colors. So um, green and a little bit of glitter and some water and, um, I use some gold paint. I just use some different colors. Some I made stain, some I did not. And I just put the colors on where I like them. And then once they were dry, I just dry brushed some black all the way around to make all of the little details stand out. And I just love that little truck so much. So for the last part of this project, I'm going to show you guys how to do the base and the star of this tree. So I start off with these little boxes, with one of these little boxes from Dollar Tree, and I just glue the middle part down. I then stain it with my Antique Wax by Waverly, wiping off the excess. And then to finish this box off, I take some of these skinny sticks, or coffee stirs, whatever you would like to call them. And I just kind of measure out the frame and cut those down, gluing those down with some Gorilla Hot Glue. And then I also measured out the X piece in the middle. I cut those down and glue those down as well. And then I stain those with my antique wax. And last but not least, of course, you guys know I had to dry brush. If it is not dry brush, then I don't feel that the project is finished. I just love the way that it looks. It brings out all of those details. It looks old and rustic, which is right up my alley. Let me know, you guys. I'm always curious and think it's so interesting for people who love farmhouse decor, but you just don't like dry brushing and the distressing. It's just super interesting to me. So let me know in the comments. Are you a distressed kind of person or are you more of the modern clean look? So to attach this box... I should say moving right along. To attach this box, I just put some hot glue down. Now, I would recommend to use a stronger holding glue like E6000 or something of that nature just to ensure that this is not going to go anywhere. But for video purposes, I just use hot glue and I attach that to the middle of the bottom of my boxes. Last but not least, I take this galvanized star from the Crafter Square section at Dollar Tree. I take my antique wax and I just kind of dry brush in random spots, focusing on the edging because when things rust, usually the edging goes first. So I just like to focus on the edges and then randomly put um, rust spots um, all over the place. Normally for this, I was looking for my cinnamon. I was going to do my Mod Podge and cinnamon rust trick, but of course I moved things around in my craft room. I could not find it after 20 minutes. I was like, okay, Melissa, it's not that deep. So 
next time um i know there's a lot of new people i'll show you guys how to do the rust technique but anyway um once i had this all dry brushed then i just attached it to the top with some hot glue and you can see my little helper here she's so sweet you guys always in the craft room helping me and i just love it so much i'll have those memories for years to come so anyway once that was attached and i put all of my little decor pieces inside i am so satisfied it is such a good feeling to have it all done to step back and look at it and just to take pride knowing that I used my hands I took my time I focused and I really put my all into these projects and I know that you guys can do the same if you guys make this project please tag me on Instagram I love to see your recreations it's my favorite thing about my job so definitely do that let me know um, also, don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you haven't already. You might as well become part of this crafty family. We have so much fun around here and we do lots of fun things. So you don't want to miss out on anything like that. Um, what else am I forgetting, you guys? Oh, don't forget to share this video because those thumbs up and those shares really help my channel to grow and help YouTube to notice me just a bit more. Don't forget to follow me, like I said, on my other social medias. And if nobody has told you today, you are absolutely amazing and gorgeous. You are worthy. And I love you with all my heart and soul. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye. Okay guys, so to start off this first project, this is probably my favorite project in the whole video. Of course, you guys can let me know in the comments, but I start off with 12 of the birdhouses from Dollar Tree, and I just took a bunch of pieces of scrap wood in my scrap wood pile. This is a piece of poplar that I get from Home Depot, but you can use wooden rollers from Dollar Tree, or you can use stir sticks. There's so many different things you can use for this, but like I said, I just used scrap wood that I had. So I started off by laying down two of the birdhouses and then putting them on top of the wood, marking it, and then cutting it. But this is fine for the bottom row. So I do two at the bottom, then four, three, two, one. So for the bottom two, that's fine. But for the others, you want to put them together and then lay your stick on top and mark from roof to roof, if that makes sense. Because if you do it the way that I was doing it, um, I ended up having to go back and cut more pieces and then attach those to the bottom of the other pieces, which was a total waste of time. So don't waste your time do as I say, not as I do, and mark from roof to roof piece. That way, once you um, glue all of your pieces together, then they'll glue together nicely. I also wanted to mention, do not try to break these apart. Once you glue them down, um, once I glued down that first piece of wood, I was going to try to take it off to attach the new pieces that I cut, but these are super cheap, so they just broke right apart. So I did just have to end up attaching the piece to the original piece of wood. So if that made no sense, then you can see what I'm doing here. You can also see I'm showing you where the birdhouse was coming apart. And I did just glue that back together before I totally destroyed it. I also took my little mini zip sander and I sanded down all of the edges smooth. Once I had all of my layers glued together, then I go in with my Dixie Belt Voodoo 
gel stain. You guys, I love this. It's just like the stain that we make with paint and water, but it's actual stain. It dries super quick. It's water-based, so it doesn't stink, and I love it so much. So I did stain two of the layers with that. I painted two of the layers in the white, and then I painted one of the layers with my Dixie Belle Barn Red. And this is the moment that it comes together and I am so excited to put it all together. So once I had this part done, then I was kind of unsure what I wanted to do. So I ultimately decided to transfer on all of the numbers 1 through 12. For the brown boxes, I transferred on with gold. For the white boxes, I transferred on the numbers in my red chalk paste. And then obviously for the red, I transferred it on with my white chalk paste. Don't forget to always quickly wash your transfers once you're done using the paste. That way you can use these over and over again as long as you take care of them properly. They should last you upwards of 20 uses, if not more. Okay, so my Dollar Tree did not have 12 birdhouses of the exact same pattern, so I had to kind of maneuver the numbers on there, but in the end, it looked amazing, so no harm, no foul. Now, for the last one, number 12, there was no way that the two was fitting, so I just carefully pulled out the, I think it's kind of like a skewer or a dowel rod for the perch. So I just gently pulled that out. I did try to do that on several of them. And again, it just wanted to break apart. That's why I didn't do that in the beginning. But for the 12, I was bound and determined to get the two to fit on there. So I just carefully worked that out. And then once I was done transferring on the two, then I just attached that back in with some hot glue. So for the number eight, I messed it up and I just wanted to show you guys how to fix it. It's super easy if you're not working on a chalkboard. When you're working on a chalkboard, it just wipes clean. It's super easy. But when you're working on a painted surface, the easiest way is to just kind of blot it off if the color is light enough. But for this, this is red. It was super bright. So I neutralized it with green first and then I went back in with the white and it covered up super easy. It's kind of like makeup. Um, they sell green concealer to cover up the redness and then you can cover it with your makeup and you can't see it. So it's kind of the same, it's kind of the same concept with painting. Next, I go in with my antique wax and I dry brush all the way around all of my white boxes. Next, I go in with my white Dixie Belle. <laughs> That's weird saying that. I'm usually, I'm used to saying Waverly chalk paint. I go in with my cotton Dixie Belle and I also dry brush all the way around the stained boxes. And I also forgot that I did do the red boxes with the cotton Dixie Belle paint as well. Now this next step, I cannot take credit for. This was my sweet subscriber, Christine's idea. She is a really, really good friend of mine. I'd actually call her one of my best friends. Christine, I love you so much. Thank you so much for this amazing idea. But she came up with the amazing idea to put a light coat of glitter on these. So what I did was took some gloss Mod Podge from 
Dollar Tree and some of my gold Arteza glitter. And I didn't go overboard with the glitter, but I just lightly put a splash of glitter in the Mod Podge and then covered all of my boxes. Once the coat was done, then I did go in for a second coat just because y'all know I'm extra and I like it shiny. Um, but I did do two coats and it's your choice if you want to do one or five or none that's totally up to you so once they were completely dry now is the fun part putting it all together so i just took some of my wood glue hot glue and i just glued on top of the roof parts and then glued my pieces down now this was a little wobbly and it did not glue together perfectly but mine is not at a place where it's gonna fall down so i wasn't too worried about it if you're worried about it you can go from the back and then just put like a glob of hot glue where each roof part meets the wood piece if that makes sense OMG you guys that spin on that turntable I cannot get enough of it the glitter on these boxes in the light I love it so much that gold against that barn red Dixie Belle paint I know a lot of you guys cannot get the Waverly paint anymore you guys Dixie Belle is so much better than Waverly I will leave a link in the description box go check it out it's chalk paint it's amazing paint it goes on so buttery smooth and I promise you won't regret it again I know you guys can't get it a lot of you can't get it and I'm always looking for ways to help you guys out so when Dixie Belle sent me some stuff I could not wait to test it out and I love this project I think those colors just make it pop so let me know in the comments down below what you guys think of my favorite project in this video Moving on to DIY number two. Now back in the fall time, I made this book stack and it was a spooky book stack and I could not wait to make one for Christmas time. Now this one is peppermint themed, but you can make this whatever theme you like. I start off with these boxes from Dollar Tree. These are the nesting boxes that look like books and I paint the biggest one with my barn red Dixie Belle. Now scatterbrain me, let this drying on the wet paint, left this drying on the wet paint. So I just go in with my Christmas scrapbook paper and I measure it out, cut it down to size and then glue it down with my disappearing purple glue stick. I like that so much that I flipped it over and I did the back side the exact same way. While those were drying, I went on to the next two boxes. So for one of them, I painted it with my cotton Dixie Bell paint. And then for the next one, I painted it with my truffle paint. And before I painted it, I took some of my Jenga blocks from Dollar Tree and just glued them on all three sides on the inside. That way, once I shut this cover I have something to glue it to because if you try to glue to that little edge it's hard to get your hot glue directly on there and then it's a mess so doing it this way just makes your life so much easier. Next, I go in with a piece of foam board. I lay the spine of my book down on my foam board. I mark it and then use my utility knife to cut that piece out.
to make this look like a piece of wood, you just want to rough it up. So I take my fingernail and just put some knots in there. I then take something sharp and put some holes and scratches because just like a natural piece of wood, this should not look perfect. I then go in with my antique wax and my clear wax and a bath sponge from Dollar Tree cut in four. I, we're just going to use one quarter of it and I start by making some streaks. I let that dry. Then I go in with some ink Waverly chalk paint alternating between colors going on the edges and there's really no rhyme or reason to this technique. You do it to your liking and to your eyes are happy. Once that was dry, then I glued it down to the spine of our book with some hot glue. And then I went in with my chip brush and my Dixie Belle cotton paint and dry brushed all over that piece again to make it look more realistic. I then used the same paint and the same brush and I dry brushed all the way around this book to make the entire thing look cohesive. I do the same thing for the red book and then for the next book I use my antique wax to dry brush on the white one as well. Now to decorate these, I wasn't too sure what I wanted to do, but I remembered that I had this red and white clay from Dollar Tree. So I took some out. I had my little helper help me and we just started off with a piece of red and rolled it into a skinny straw, I guess. I don't really know what you want to call it, but I just rolled it out to a long string, I guess. And then I did the exact same thing for the white. Once that was done, then I just kind of twirled them together, being very careful because if you pull too hard, this will come apart. And if you're too soft, then it just doesn't do anything. So you kind of have to have the perfect amount of pressure, um, but no worries. There's plenty of it. Um, try it. If you mess it up, you can always do it again and again. This was actually super therapeutic. I loved it so much and Sophia had an amazing time doing it with me as well. So get your kiddos involved, get your grandkids involved, or just have a crafting therapy session, sit and uh, make some cool little candies or candy canes. I don't really know. The possibilities are endless and it's totally up to you what you want to make. But with the leftover excess that I had from the first candy cane that I made after I shaped it into a candy cane, then I just kind of twirled it around um, and then stuck a dowel rod in the end and made a tiny lollipop. I also made another little candy as well as a second candy cane and I flipped the second candy cane over and made a heart out of it. Now for this transfer you guys this thing has a story so I took it out of my shed and was going to make signs with it that night. We were heading to Walmart so I put it in my husband's truck. He took it out to put the groceries in and left it on the back of his truck. We get home and he's like, where's the transfer? I said, I don't know. He had to go back to Walmart. He had to go back to Walmart and found it in the road. It was raining. It was wet. But guess what, you guys? These things are so durable. It was just fine. I took it off of the backing sheet that was soaking wet. I put it on a few backing sheets that I had and all was good. So once I cut up my transfer, then I go in with my little heart candy cane. I glue that down to the middle, being very careful because I am super impatient and I could not wait for it to air dry. So I had to just glue it down uh, wet. I then kind of laid the other candies out. I didn't really like the way they looked. So I just went in my transfer stash, picked out some more um, transfers that I thought would look cute and I ultimately decide on the mistletoe because it has that greenery in it I thought that it would be pretty to bring that green against that brown and that red 
I then transferred on a candy cane to the faux wood grain. Originally, I used my glitter red, but you couldn't really see it, so I went in with my white. For the back side of the white book, I went in with my This Way to the Peppermint Forest that was in that same transfer that I just cut up that got stuck in the rain that my husband went and rescued. <laughs> what a kind, generous man. I love him so much. He's so sweet. Anyway, um, I go in with the other side of my book stack. Originally, I went in with the bow, but I didn't really like the way that it looked, so I went in my... Uh, scrapbook stash again I picked out this uh, patterned white and red transfer I measured it or not transfer scrapbook paper I measured it out cut it down and then once again glued it down now for the tops of the um, white and brown books I forgot to mention that while the paint was drying I did streak some antique wax just to kind of give it dim some dimension and look like book pages um, so I did just want to mention that. I forgot to tell you guys that. But that was it, you guys. I love this book stack so much. At first, I wasn't too sure about it. I was like, oh, I'm not too sure. This isn't really my style. But the more I look at it, it's growing on me. I love it so much. Let me know in the comments down below. Is this like, uh, I'm not really too sure about this book stack. Or do you guys love this DIY? Okay friends, so to start off this DIY, which might be one of my favorite DIYs that I have ever done, I start off with these four Dollar Tree box drawer looking decor pieces. I'm not really sure what you wanna call it, but you can see what I'm using. And I just flip them over and use my blow dryer to remove the stickers. I set those aside and then I take these longer signs from Dollar Tree. Now these are not the longer ones that I normally use. These are in between the really long ones and then the shorter ones, if that makes sense. So they're kind of like the medium size, but I also take off the hangers off of six of those as well as the stickers. Once I've done that, then I go in with my mouse sander and I just sand all of those edges smooth, like where the stickers were and where the staple, where the staples were holding in the jute hanger. Next, I take a piece of foam board and I lay my sign down and I just cut a piece long enough to be the back part of our this is going to be a fireplace if you did not see that already, but this is going to be the back part and this is going to act as kind of like the stability for our, far, our fireplace so that way we have something to glue to if that makes sense. So once I have that cut down, then I go in with some Jenga blocks and I just glue them along the back edge. Once again, that way I had something to glue the foam board to. Now here in a minute, I'm gonna explain something to you that I wish I had cut this a little bit shorter, but like I said, I'll explain that in a minute. But once I had the Jenga blocks down, then I kind of flip it up. I glue onto the Jenga blocks with some hot glue, and then I lay down the foam board and glue one of those six signs to the side. You wanna make sure that you're checking the back, that the back is nice and secured to that side piece. And then I just took a scrap piece of dowel rod that I had in my scrap wood bin, and I cut it down to the size of the sign. I glued it down to the side, and then I also took another sign and glued that directly to the dowel rod right into the front, making sure that it all lines up nicely. I repeat that step for the side piece, and then I repeat all of those steps for the right-hand side. Okay, so before I go any further, I'm just going to um, explain this like while I'm right here instead of a voiceover because I think sometimes a voiceover, like you just don't really realize what, like I can't explain it that great on a voiceover. Pretty much. So if I was doing this again, 
I would cut this um, this width shorter and then leave this block this width um, like over this way. That way this could sit flush with this back here because now I have to go in and cover this. That way, like you can't really tell that there's this gap back here, if that makes sense. So um, just keep that in mind when or if you make this for yourself. Now that I have my side pieces on, I am going to take another piece. I kind of measure it in the middle and I never use like a measuring tape or roller. I mean, sometimes I do, but I like to just lay it up on my piece and then mark it and cut that way. I just seem to have better luck, but if you'd like to measure, you can. But I do cut one piece of the sign and I also cut another piece for the um, bottom side and I do just cut that out of cardboard um, just to um, close that all in. And once I had those glued down, then I go in on that back part like I was just talking about and I glue some Jenga blocks down with some hot glue just to close that off. Okay, so I just realized that I misspoke back there. Sometimes these videos that I edit go quicker than my mouth does. But anyway, um, before I attach the top part, I painted the background black, which you can skip that part because in the end, I end up making a completely different piece for that part. So I would just skip that if you make yours um, the way that I made mine. But to attach this front piece, I wanted it to be nice and sturdy. So I just took some really small dowels that I get from Amazon and all the stuff that I use from Amazon or Chalk Couture or any of that stuff is always linked in my link tree in the description box below. So if you just click on the title of the video, a box will appear and you will see um, all of the links are now in one place. Click here and then you can just page through and literally every single link that I have attached to me and all things crafty is in that link tree. So anyway, once I attach those small dowels with some hot glue, then I attach the front piece as well as the bottom piece, which the bottom piece is obviously the cardboard, like I was saying. And then I go in from the top and I just load that thing up with some hot glue to ensure that it won't go anywhere. Next, I take these wood pieces from Dollar Tree, which might I add is really impressive, you guys, to find all the new wood pieces from Dollar Tree. Um, it's just mind boggling and it blows my mind, but I absolutely love it so they can keep it coming. But I do just take the stickers off and then I attach all three of these to the top of my fireplace. Next, I take these wall plaques from Dollar Tree, and I've seen a lot of people do different things with these, and um, I definitely want to do something different in the future as well, but for this project, I start by taking the stickers off of the back, which again, you can probably skip that step because I end up doing something different than I originally had planned. Um, but then I do just paint the back and the sides with my ink Waverly chalk paint. I then take some more of these wooden pieces from Dollar Tree, um, four of them to be exact, and I take the hangers off of them and set those aside. I then just take those signs that we just painted and I glue them together with some hot glue side by side. And then I, and then I'm getting ahead of myself. Slow down, Melissa. <laughs> and then I attach those to the top of my project. Now you can see here that I had pulled it up because I attached it too far to the front and I wanted to move it back a little bit. So I did that and then I glued those wood pieces down to the top to cover up that wording. And um, I don't know if I mentioned, but I did get those wood pieces from Dollar Tree in the crafter square section. Next, I take four of these boxes from Dollar Tree, identical to the ones that we used for the base of this fireplace, but these are the smaller versions. 
Next, I go in with my white Waverly chalk paint just to give this all an even coat and have it be one color. Because I'm going to wrap this with contact paper, sometimes contact paper is really thin and once you lay it down on whatever surface you are using or, you know, laying it down on, um, depending upon what color it is and how thin your contact paper is, you can see right through it. So I do just like to start with a clean base. I then just take this contact paper that I had left over from a different project and I just wrap this entire bottom part of my fireplace. Now Dollar Tree sells plenty of contact paper. This is just what I had on hand. I had so many different ideas running through my brain for this project. I originally was going to use the new Dollar Tree wallpapers but I didn't really like the way that that looked so I ended up pulling that up and cutting that out and then this this is what I ultimately decided on but it's your preference and whenever you make your own then you can choose on whatever finish you like. Now the easiest way I found to do this was to start on the right hand side, wrap it over to the left hand side and that is only the part above the first part if that makes sense. So not the base of the fireplace or the step but only the fireplace itself is what I wrapped at first. I left the opening, um, you know, I left that alone and just continued to wrap it. Once I had wrapped it, then I went back into the opening. I cut along the top edge of the opening and then I cut a slip, a slip, yeah. I then cut a slip slit down the middle and then just wrapped it down either side. I wasn't worried if it went all the way to the back because um, the new version that I make for the insert um, comes you know closer to the surface of the fireplace opening. Um, I wasn't too worried about it if that makes sense but anyway um, if you're going to put something all the way to the back of your fireplace, then I would consider trying to wrap that a different way. But once I had the top part wrapped, then I did go in and wrap the step. Next, I go in with my Kona stain and I stain the top of the fireplace mantle. And then I also had this uh, trim piece laying around. This I had this from back when Sophia and I did a video back in the spring. So I thought that it would be perfect to trim out this fireplace mantle. Once I had all of my trim pieces measured out and cut down, then I do just attach them with some hot glue. Now, if you want this to last, I would consider using a stronger holding glue like E6000 or, you know, super glue, something of that nature. But for video purposes, I did just use some hot glue. And then I went in and I painted the floor of the insert of the fireplace with my ink Waverly chalk paint, as well as down around the front of the step. Next I take a piece of cardboard and I just measure out the insert of the fireplace and then I cut that down to size as well as painting that with my ink Waverly chalk paint. Once again, I had these wood slices in my stash from last year around Christmas time. Um, you can get them from Arteza. I do believe I have an Arteza link in my link tree in the description box below, um, but I do just arrange those on my insert. And then while I was waiting for my husband to come home because I needed him to cut me some more pieces that he found out in my yard, um, I did just go ahead and cut some decorative trim pieces for the front of my fireplace and I cut those down to size and stained those with my homemade stain. Thank you. 
Once I had these little twig pieces cut up from my yard, I did go in and just kind of fill in the blank spaces. And then for the really, really tiny spots that I knew none of my pieces would fit, I did just take my scissors and just cut random pieces and arrange those that way. And then I secured those down with some hot glue. Play with this, you guys. Get in the Christmas spirit. Turn on some Christmas music. Turn on your favorite show. I'm not really sure what you do to get into the mood, but you guys, I'm so excited. And this did not take me long at all, but I really just enjoyed like arranging these and putting this together. This really was a passion project of mine, and I just love the way that it turned out. But I have so many good ideas for this little fireplace. Let me know in the comments down below if you you guys want to see a revised or to be continued version because I could make so many cute little decorations to go on this thing but anyway I want to show you guys here that I kind of messed up and glued my top decorative trim pieces down and the little side piece was the wrong piece so they are crooked and when I went to go pull them up to change it because it was driving me nuts, it did pull up the contact paper and I don't have any more and <sighs> once I realized it, I was able to fix the bottom pieces. So all in all, the only crooked pieces are the top trim pieces, which in the end you can't really tell. I can tell, but... It is what it is. Eventually, I will rewrap this and change those out. But for now, I love the way that this turned out. I did add some Jenga blocks and add in my wooden insert piece. And I secured that down with some hot glue. And then literally, you guys, I know that this took a little bit of time. But this was a love project. I had so much fun making it. Look how cute it turned out. And it's perfect for all my Christmas decor. So let me know in the comments down below if you guys will make one or if this project is a little too complicated for you. But either way, I appreciate you stopping by. And um, like I said, let me know in the comments down below what you guys think. Okay friends, moving on to DIY number two. Now I have these tree cutouts from Chalk Couture, but you don't need these because technically um, I don't use the actual tree in the end. I'm just using the shape of the tree. So if you have anything this shape, you can certainly use that. But because these were the perfect shape that I wanted or that I was going for, I did just go ahead and use these, but I took them out of the packaging. Um, I did show you how cute they are. They have interchangeable stars, and they also have a transfer that goes with it. Um, so that's super cute. If you wanna check that out, check out my shop in my link tree. Um, but anyway, I just take them out of the package and wrap them with some plastic. I then take some jute from Dollar Tree, I tie a knot around the top, and then I just go on and wrap this entire thing. Now this did take the entire roll, um, so it took two rolls for two trees, but all in all, $2 for two trees. I mean, really, it probably costs about $5 to make both because of the Mod Podge, um, and the bases so really like five six bucks but really um for how high end it looks 
you really made out like a bandit. So anyway, um, once I had both of them wrapped, then I go in, or I guess just one of them here, huh? <laughs> once I had it wrapped with my jute, then I go in with my Mod Podge and I just really soak that thing and then I leave it out to dry overnight and I do that to both. I then just cut the end once they're dry and I kind of like shimmy it off of that tree and I guess I lost the footage of me taking it off of it but it's really simple. I mean anybody can do it. Um, and then I just attach a scrap piece of dowel that once again I had in my scrap pile and I attach that with some hot glue and then I had these fairy lights that I believe I got in a pack of like 24 from Amazon that are really cheap and they have really tiny battery packs so I glued the battery pack to the inside and then I just wrap the lights around naturally and you can use stars for the top of this from Dollar Tree, but because I just had these white ones right here, I'm a lazy crafter, you guys. <laughs> I just grabbed them and glued them on because they were convenient and they were right there. Next, I went in on one of them with some Mod Podge and some uh, glitter from Arteza. And I just did like a bronze color and a gold color and just mixed that glitter and then shook off the excess. Last but not least, I take these small square dowels, or yeah, square dowels. No, Melissa, they're, uh, they look like coasters to me. I'm not really sure, but they're square pieces from Dollar Tree, and I use my faux stain to stain both of them. Last but not least, I um, screw in some pilot holes to the wood piece as well as the dowels, and then I attach them both with some screws. Now to finish this off, I felt it was a little bit plain at the bottom. I'm sorry this is a little bit out of frame, but I had a little bit of this Excelsior left over from Easter, and I know normally you don't use this at Christmas, but I felt that it gave like the perfect pop to this plain color. So let me know in the comments down below if you would use something like moss or if you like the look of the Excelsior. But literally these were so easy to make. I love the way that they turned out and they look so high end on such a budget. Thank you guys so much for being here for DIY number four. So I start off by taking three of these signs from Dollar Tree. I lay them down on my transfer from Chalk Couture to make sure that they fit. And I see that they're a little long. So I do just use my utility knife and I cut all three of those down to size. If you guys are liking this video, would you consider subscribing if you haven't already? And if you're already subscribed, please hit that thumbs up. Those thumbs up really help my channel to grow. So to move on, I take some large popsicle sticks and some hot glue and I just attach those. And then normally I'm a big fan of just fuzzing your transfer until you can't fuzz anymore. But because I've used this in the past and these transfers pull up that cheap Dollar Tree faux wood, I did go in with my surface wax a very, very, very tiny bit. And then I have my little helper here. We cut the star away from the transfer. And then with these bigger transfers, because I don't know if you can tell, but this transfer is, I believe, 18 by 18. So it's a pretty good size or it's 
yeah, I think it's 18 by 18. It's either 12 by 18 or 18. Yeah, it's 18 by 18. Sorry, you guys. Um, but because it's pretty good size, sometimes they're a little bit tricky. So the easiest way to use these is to peel the backing sheet away from the transfer and then you'll fuzz on top of the transfer. So just leave the transfer sticky side up and fuzz that way. And then I have my helpers here and we transfer on the Bless This Farmhouse Christmas with my black chalk paste and we transfer on the tree with my gold shimmer paste per my little helper's request. And then as you can see, you guys, that's what I love about this. This is so easy. A five-year-old can do it. She does it by herself. She loves it. She picks out the colors. She transfers it on. She fuzz. She does it all, literally. And if she can do it, I know that you can do it. So if you want to shop these products, you can check the link tree in the description in the description box below but once we have that all transferred on then we wash our transfers leave them sticky side up that way you can use them over and over again and then we had a little spot here and i told her to quit licking her q-tip but she's five so whatever but we just wanted to show you how easy it is to clean that up so we just used a little bit of water or spit i'm sorry you guys i know that's nasty but it is what it is you guys know my famous line and we just cleaned that up very easily and then i had this scrap trim piece once again which i didn't have enough for the entire frame so i thought that it would look really cute to just put at the top and the bottom so i measure that out and cut that with my miter shears and then i paint them with my white waverly chalk paint Now, I'm impatient, so in the end, this looked exactly like the color of my sign, but I would just wait a couple minutes and then go in with your antique wax and your uh, mini chip brush if you like dry brushing, um, but mine just ended up looking like mud, which I didn't really mind because it looks cute to me. Um, but I did just dress that up with my fairy lights and I wrapped those around the trim pieces and then I kind of fed it down the sign so that way I could attach it to the bottom piece of trim as well. So what I did was I took the first trim piece and wrapped it around. I glued that piece down and then I glued it to the back, fed it down the side of the back of the sign glued it in place and then I glued it to the front piece of trim and then glued that down with some hot glue as well and then I glued the battery pack to the back of my sign. You guys, this is what I love most about Chalk Couture. I literally made this sign in about 30 minutes when normally the other ways that I use to make signs would have taken me hours, if not days. So anyway, it's just a matter of preference. There's so many different ways you can make signs. This is my favorite way. Let me know in the comments down below which is your favorite way to make signs. Okay, tell them. Say Merry Christmas. <laughs> Say Merry Christmas. <laughs> Say we're going to show you the last DIY. Oh, somebody's grumpy. 
Okay, you guys, so we're just gonna wrap a present, literally. I take an old box and some brown craft paper from Dollar Tree, and the best way to do faux presents is to just use hot glue because you can smooth it out and make them look really nice. But I just wrap this, obviously, just like you would wrap a present, and I secure it with some hot glue. And then once I wrap the brown paper around, then I have this 18-foot ribbon from Walmart, I believe. And I always use the ribbon that it has on there. Some come with it, some don't, but there's no need to waste it, you know? So I just use that and I start by wrapping it around um, the one side and then I cut it and wrap it around the other side, securing that down with some hot glue. And then I just repeat those steps with some burlap ribbon. Next, I make kind of like a faux bow for the top of it. So you just want to take a long piece of ribbon and then you fold the one side in and glue it down. And then you fold the other side in and glue it down. And then once that glue is dry, then you can fluff it up. And then, like I said, I'm going to use this bow from the packaging of the ribbon. And then I glue that to the middle on the opposite side. And then I glue that down to the top of our present. Next, I uh, cut two of these pieces from the kind of lacy ribbon or lace ribbon, I should say. Um, and then I just kind of cut that in half because it is thick and it didn't look it didn't look right like draped over the side of the present so I did just cut that a ha in half and secured that down with some hot glue and then to finish this off I just cut some of so moving on to the last one that is probably my favorite I don't know it's in between the gnome and this one but I took three beware signs I cut one of them in half and then on the two longer ones I cut the edges off where they were kind of like serrated and then I um, just took a ruler and cut pieces on a slant and then I just used that piece to cut the other pieces um, kind of like a template so for the boat for the bigger ones I did um, cut them a little bit longer and then for the ones I cut in half obviously they're a little bit shorter but if that makes no sense you can see what I'm doing here I then just take my large popsicle sticks and I glue all these pieces together once I had all my pieces glued on, you want to make sure you use a lot so that this is nice and sturdy. I then just used my Crimson Waverly Chalk Paint and I gave it a really good coat of that beautiful red color. Anyway, I take some large popsicle sticks, I measure them on my little slants and then cut them down and then we're going to work on the doors and the windows for this project. So I had these skinny sticks from Walmart and they come in a pack. There's a bunch in there. I cut pieces down for the door. Um, I cut one in half and then used two whole ones. So obviously the half, half pieces are going to be on the top and bottom. And then the long pieces are going to be on the side. They weren't quite long enough to make the X pieces in the door. So I did just take a large popsicle stick. I cut the ends off and then took my utility knife to just cut skinnier pieces. And I basically cut the larger popsicle stick in four. Then I just assemble my pieces. Um, once I cut the large pops, large popsicle stick down, I did cut it down to make the X. And then, like I said, I connected all the pieces. So for the window, I basically did the same thing. 
I cut the skinny stick down a little bit smaller than half because I wanted my windows skinnier and then I cut a longer piece for the bottom because I wanted it to kind of look like a windowsill and then I took my hot glue I glued that down and then I measured one cross piece for the middle and then three going the other way so basically you're gonna have six panes in this window so once I had that longer piece down um, I don't know if I mentioned that I did lay it down and cut it down to size and then glued everything together I took my white Waverly chalk paint and for the roof pieces and the windows and the barn doors I did give them all a really good coat so while they're drying I take my ruler and I make a mark every three inches then take the ruler and I use my black paint pen and I didn't feel like pulling out my Arteza paint pen again so I did just use the one that was right in front of me because I was on a time crunch and I went over those marks and then surprise surprise <laughs> I take my chip brush and some ink Waverly chalk paint and I just give it a really good coat all the, or a really good dry brushing all the way around the edges and then I start in the middle by going over the lines that I made and then I go in between the lines. You can do that as much or as little as you want, but I really like it um, darker on this sign just because it makes it look old and rustic in my personal opinion. I then just printed off this wreath from Google, traced it on with my graphite paper, and then I went over it with my green Arteza paint pen. And I printed off home and then um, I went over it with my white Arteza paint pen. I also um, printed off for the holidays, traced that on and went over it with the white paint pen as well. And then I took this black cardstock from Dollar Tree. I cut or I traced where the windows are and then cut those out and glued them down just so that way um, I don't know I like the way it looked like this you can let me know in the comments down below if you would leave out the black cardstock or if you would put it on there and then once I had that all cleaned up I just glued down the doors and the windows and although this took me a little bit of time just because you guys I don't like I said before I don't do a trial run so when I'm doing these projects kind of figuring out how to get it together is a bit tricky and then to do it again it's really really easy but anyway I went over the doors and the windows with this ink Waverly chalk paint and then that was it you guys I love this sign so 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 much I haven't even decorated for Christmas yet and I already have it up on my little um, cube storage stand or whatever you want to call it but okay guys happy friday starting off i take these little tinsel sleighs from dollar tree and i start by just cutting it right down the middle now i thought these were kind of weaved but they're not so all you have to do is cut down the middle and then just pull the tinsel off of the sides and the bottom I then do the exact same thing with this little tree and originally I was going to use those presents so I did those as well but you don't have to worry about those because I did not end up using them so I take this roll of nautical rope now Dollar Tree does have some I could not find some any anywhere and my husband had these out in the shed so he did give them to me he had a bunch of rolls so um i they were from ace hardware and i don't think you would need any more than one roll if you wanted to get a bigger roll but like i said they do have them at dollar tree so i just start by 
um, going along the bottom part of the sleigh and then I just kind of go back and forth with the nautical rope until I cover that entire bottom part. Once I have that bottom part covered, then I go around the sides that connect the bottom to the sleigh and I start by just gluing down the one piece and then I just go around it until the entire part is covered and I just repeat the same step on the other side. I do hot glue the edges to the back once I, I am done covering them and then I take this um, white nautical rope from Dollar Tree and I originally was going to cover this whole part of the sleigh but then I figured out that I wanted to do kind of like a design so I just start by gluing it down to the bottom edge and this sleigh is raised in some parts so as you can see here I do go with the white rope around the bottom part and then at the top part where it's curved as well as in the back where it's curved and then all the other parts that I left open I did just go in with some more of the brown nautical rope and filled those uh, parts of this sleigh in. So I found that the easiest way to glue the rope down after you have your initial first layer on is to just glue it to the existing uh, rope because if you try to glue it straight to the plastic there's not very much to glue to so I found that when I was gluing it it was kind of difficult so like I said if you just glue it to the existing existing rope it's much much easier to glue down once I had both pieces covered and you want to make sure that you're covering the side that's going to match up so you don't want to cover both sides into the front because or you do want to cover both sides in the front because if you cover one on the back one on the front or whatever it's not going to match up when you put your sleigh together so anyway once I had those covered then I do just take some large popsicle sticks and I go over the back part I just wanted to kind of close that up and make it a little bit more finished on the back side of each so I do just lay my popsicle sticks down I mark where they need to be cut and then I glued them down for the bottom part where there's nothing to glue with I did just take some of the little wooden squares from Dollar Tree and glued those down so that I had something to glue to and it ended up being perfect. I then just took this little tray, I cut down some of those large popsicle sticks and glued them to the inside where the handles are and then I just took some lightweight spackling from Dollar Tree as well and I covered in those holes. Once I had the holes covered, then I go in with some of, I believe this is Fawn Waverly Chalk Paint, and I give the back side of this sleigh a coat of this. It matches the brown nautical rope really nicely, so I wanted to match that as close as I possibly could and I was pretty impressed with how good it matched so once I had the back side painted then I did go in with my little mini sander this is linked in my Amazon favorites under micro zip sander and I sand down where the handles are I paint it with that same color and then I take my tight bond and some hot glue to glue the tray into the middle of our little sleigh. I did run a bead of hot glue behind the back side just because where the rope is it did not want to sit flush with it so I did just reinforce it with some hot glue. 
Next, I take some large popsicle sticks again. I measure out how long I need it because I wanted the back side of the sleigh to be more raised than this little tray was. So I did just cut those pieces down. I measured more of them and I put three in the back and one in the front and I secured that with some hot glue. Next, I just take that same paint once again and I just go over the pieces that I just glued down. Last but not least, I just put a piece of foam into that little tray and then I just cut some greenery that I had off of the picks. Um, I got some from Michael's, some from Hobby Lobby, and then I just decorated the inside how I liked with some little mini pine cones as well. And you can dress this up with some presents or whatever you want to do, but this is what I wanted to do with mine and I am just so in love with the way it turned out. Let me know in the comments. Moving on to our little Christmas tree, I did want to cover this color green because I had a feeling that you were going to be able to see through here. So I did just want to make sure that if you saw through it, then you wouldn't see this bright green color since I am using some more neutral colors. So we're going to make tassels. I just took a piece of cardboard and I measured the top piece of how long that I would need my tassels. Now, I cut it exactly the same size. I would recommend to do it just a little bit longer so that your tassel hangs over because once you tie it, it kind of bunches it up a little bit shorter. So in the end, it didn't really matter, but I definitely do recommend to make it a little bit longer. But you just want to wrap it around. I did 25 times and I think it was probably the perfect amount. So I then cut the string. I cut off two pieces and I put one piece through while it was on the cardboard and tied that right at the top into a double knot. And then I pulled it off the cardboard and then I tied another knot around the top to make it bunch up at the top. Now, once I did this a few times, I did start wrapping them around my hand and my hand, my hands are pretty small because as you go down the tree until you get to the bottom piece, um, they're a little bit smaller anyway. So once I did get down to the bottom piece, I did just use it around or wrap it around my palm rather than my fingers and I didn't have an issue. So I would just try it if they're too small or too big, then you can make adjustments, no big deal, but it was much easier to wrap it around my hand. So once I had that other piece tied, then I do just take my scissors and cut the bottom pieces apart. I then just set that aside and I made three for the top and then I went down a number for each um, layer. So the I went three, four, five, six. And then for the bottom piece, I did make two uh, jute tassels just to cover the stem part and I did get this ribbon at Michael's it was on clearance for three dollars and then I also had a coupon so I think I got this ribbon for like 75 cents so um, definitely a good deal for all these colors and it's really really nice quality but um, the white ribbon I did get from Dollar Tree so you can definitely get get it at Dollar Tree. My Dollar Tree just didn't have any colors other than black and white. So it's really up to you. You can do Christmas colors. You can do 
whatever your little heart desires but anyway once I had all my tassels made then I did just glue them down to my tree um, once I had all my tassels glued down and you guys I love the way this turned out I think it is so stinking cute but um, once I had my tassels glued down, the trunk part was kind of tricky. I wasn't really sure how I was going to do it. So I did figure out that because the trunk sits off of the bottom of the tree, there were these slats at the bottom. So I did just squeeze the top of the tassel in between those slats and then glued it down. And then I just flipped it over and trimmed the bottom. Once I trimmed the bottom, then I did just trim the rest of the layers just so that they looked more finished. And then I had a wooden star. I took my Mod Podge brush. These brushes are also linked in the description box under my Amazon favorites. And then I took some glitter from my Arteza glitter. Arteza is also linked in the description box. I have a box of like 40 jars or something and I love it so much. It's such nice glitter. Um, you can really get glitter from anywhere though. but. Anyway, um, I just pour my glitter on top of the star and then glue it to the top and look how gorgeous this turned out. Moving on to our last but not least project, I do take two beware signs. I cut off the tags, flip them over, and then use some large popsicle sticks and some hot glue to glue these signs together. Now you can glue the popsicle sticks long ways or up and, up and down. It's totally up to you. I kind of did a combination of both just to ensure that it would stay together nicely. And then I took this chalkboard paint from Dollar Tree and I gave it a really nice coat. Once I gave it a coat, and I did use my favorite, favorite brush. The brush is really nice and big so that it cuts your painting time in half. And it also gives a really nice smooth finish. Anybody who ever buys them, they are linked in the Am in my Amazon favorites. If you click the title, a box will appear. And that is where the description box is for those of you who don't know. But everybody always tells me, you're right, these are the best brushes. So anyway... I did take another transfer. This is the Christmas tree. Sorry about that, guys. I had a little tingle in my throat, but I wanted it to be extremely simple. So I did just do the wording in white and then the tree in gold. And then I had these pit berries already wrapped around each other in red and gold. So I thought that it would be a nice touch to wrap it around the top three times. And then I wrapped it around the bottom once. And then that was it for that one, you guys. My chalk couture information is in the description box below. Um, if you guys want to become part of my team or shop my site, I will have all the transfers and all those links in the description box. Thank you guys so, so much for stopping by. Okay, okay, friends, thank you so much for sticking around. If you are still here, please leave me a Santa down in the comments so that I know you watched the whole video and y'all are the real OGs. If nobody has told you today, you're absolutely stunning, you're worthy, you're gorgeous, and you can literally do anything you set your mind to. I want you guys to know how absolutely special you are to me and how grateful every single day I am for you. With that being said, if y'all want any ketone or chalk couture information on how you can get 40% off all chalk items and how I just recently lost 60 pounds in six months, please text my number. And with that being said, I'll catch y'all in the next one. Bye. Check out the videos that are popping up here to your left while you're waiting on my next upload or join the DIY fam here to your right.